Nerd Realty show. We're going with show. How are you? It's been a while. Um, wanted to go over something that I thought was kind of interesting. We've now seen, um, we've seen the general public sue the National Association of Realtors, and now we're seeing agents sue the National Association of Realtors. So it seems like the National Association of Realtors are doing something to get sued. Let's get into it. I want to go over this because I think it's fascinating. I am a member of the National Association of Realtors because I'm a realtor. And you say, well, could you not be a member of the National Association of Realtors and still do real estate? Mm, it would be tough because I have no access to the MLS. And that's, and that's what is the, the core of this argument that has been put forth. Uh, they're trying to get class action status. I'm quite fascinated by it. Let's go through it. Now, look, I'm not a lawyer, okay? I don't pretend to be a lawyer. I'm just going to read, and we're going to read together, and we're going to see if we can make sense of this. And we have some questions afterwards we're going to go over, and it's just, it's just one of those things. Um, I think they bring about some very good points, to be honest. Here it is. So I just want you to see, I pulled this off of a, a website that, that has the stuff listed. That's in the description if you want to see a version of yourself, uh, or a version for yourself. Uh, and then I'm just going to go through it right here. So uh, you can see that uh, there's, uh, I believe, three people, and they're suing the National Association of Realtors, the Michigan Association of Realtors, the Gross Point Board Association of Realtors, and the Greater Metropolitan Association of Realtors, North Oakland County Board of Realtors. That's a lot of real estate boards. You may say, well, why are there so many real estate boards? That's a good question. I am a member of one two, and I used to be a member of another one, but I stopped being a member because I don't practice um, real estate in that, in that county anymore, and I just, I just don't have it. So I'm a, member, I'm a member of two real estate boards locally, then I'm a member of the Missouri Real Estate uh, Association, and then I'm a member of the National Association of Realtors. And on all those things, I pay dues. What are my dues for? I don't really want to, I don't really want to uh, be mean about it, but apparently it's for conferences that I get to go pay for and the MLS and they do offer like forms, which is kind of odd because right now we're fighting about the forms. Um, so they offer some things. That's kind of where I'll leave it. I don't really want to miss my, my goal isn't to kick the National Association of Realtors or brokers that want to leave the National Association of Realtors. So that's where I'm going to, I'm going to put my, my statement. So Let's just go through it. It says the class action complaint is being filed challenging the requirement that all realtors and brokers in the state of Michigan be members of the National Association of Realtors, the Michigan Association of Realtors, and a local board of realtors such as the Gross Point Board of Realtors, the Greater Metropolitan Association of Realtors, and or the North Oakland County Board of Realtors to access the MLS. RealComp2 is the software company that manages the MLS and regulates the use of the MLS by brokers and agents. So... Uh, Real Comp 2 is like, we have Maris here in St. Louis. They have Real Comp 2. And, um, you know, the particular, uh, the, the board, the Gross Point Board of Realtors has probably been around for 100 years. It's probably one of the older ones in the United States. Uh, and you say, well, you know, what is this, what is this about? Like, why, why are they, why are realtors now trying to sue NAR to get out of, out of, uh, out of the association and still be able to use the MLS. Well, we're going to continue that. So it says the plaintiffs also challenge the compulsory membership in these associations upon what is essentially a violation of the antitrust laws, equi economic coercion, unfair restraint on trade, and conspiracy. These claims are predicated in part on the recent settlement of, by the National Association of Realtors of a national class action lawsuit which eliminated the broker's compensation transparency Transparency is used as a weapon at all times, don't ever forget it, for buyers and restrain seller's choice by prohibiting sellers from making offers of compensation through the MLS, essentially inviting brokers and agents to participate in deceptive compensation practices, a requirement which plaintiffs neither agree with nor believe will benefit the consumers or their industry. Further, these changes encourage discrimination among sellers and seller's agents, which will negatively affect consumers, agents, and brokers. So what they're saying let me just explain this the best way I can. At this point in time, commission is a dirty word. Offering commission in the MLS is not possible uh, as of the 17th by, based on the National Association of Realtors settlement that they entered into with the Department of Justice and this, and this lawsuit 
the, the Stitzer Burnett lawsuit. Um, the problem is you've now taken something away um, that was a clear indication of what the seller was doing. So let's just put it this way. So say the seller wants the buyer to come to the house. So they entice the buyer's agent to pay a commission. They say, we'll pay a portion of your commission uh, for, for you to bring your buyer. We want buyers, we wanna sell this property. And what this new agreement has done, they argue, is said, no, 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 now we don't know if there's any compensation. So my seller is being uh, unfairly limited my seller wants to offer compensation, wants to broadcast that to the most transparent way possible in the marketplace and say, hey, I'm offering a commission, please bring me a buyer. And now with this new agreement that NAR has entered into, they're saying, you can't do that. You can't do that. And that is a, that is a problem because we're supposed to be transparent in what, how they've looked at it, how these folks that are filing the suit is saying, you're making me lie. You're making me say, it's not really a commission that you're paying, you're saying it's seller compensation. Uh, that's, or seller uh, concession, I'm sorry. It's a seller concession if they decide to pay a real estate agent a commission on the buyer's agent side. And that's wrong. You're making me do something that's not right. Okay, just ethically, you're just not, we're not doing something right. And so that is a problem and these agents are saying, I don't wanna have anything to do with that, okay? If, if, the, if the seller is paying a commission, they should be able to market that they're selling the commission or that they're, that they're paying a commission, okay? That should be free and open-ended and transparent. And, and these people, these agents currently are saying that we're not able to do that. And so now my seller is not benefiting from that ability in the MLS. It's an argument. I'm not, I'm not gonna take sides. I understand the argument, however. Uh, and then so then secondly, it says these changes encourage discrimination among sellers and sellers agents, which will negatively affect consumers, agents and brokers. Well, how will that do it? Well, it will do that because it's you're, you're saying like one seller is not allowed to put uh, compensation out there. It's all coming from the buyer now. So it's 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 a mess, frankly. So the nature of the case, we're not gonna read the whole, the whole thing, it's 15 pages, but we don't need to get to 15 pages. We can just talk about the, the mixed up, but let's get to the, the stuff first here. It says, the individual plaintiffs uh, bring this action on behalf of themselves and, a, and of a class of similarly situated real estate brokers and agents seeking to redress the wrongful acts of the defendants, which have resulted in a loss of all plaintiffs' earning potential as a collective group, a detriment to their businesses as a whole, and a mandatory requirement that they belong to these associations, which no longer results in financial benefit to them. So now they're saying, you have taken away the guarantee of commission, okay? And I am a member of this association because you are guaranteeing a publish publishing the commission, okay? And now you're saying, or now we're saying, there's no benefit to us, but you're still forcing us to be a part of this. That's what the argument is. I don't have an opinion. I really don't. I, it doesn't do me any good to have one because it hasn't been flushed through the courts yet. All of this mess has not been flushed through the courts yet. It says, the compulsory nature of membership in the defendant's organizations in order to access the MLS is a violation of their ability to conduct business in a fair and unencumbered member manner which has resulted and will continue to result in them incurring, incurring damages. They're saying you're forcing us to be part of an association, okay, to, to access a crucial part of our business that you are no longer allowing us to use to the benefit of our sellers, okay? And so they're going over it, and, and so the, just quickly, uh, the jurisdiction is, you know, where is the case to be tried? It's gonna be in Michigan, okay? Uh, that would be the venue. And then where are the, who are the plaintiffs? Well, the plaintiffs are three people. Two, uh, two of the fellows I was reading are part of uh, a real estate brokerage, uh, Sotheby's, a, a Sotheby's franchise up in Michigan. And the, and the third one, I don't remember exactly who that is, uh, but basically uh, they do this as their primary business, okay? Their, their job is to help sellers sell their homes and help buyers buy their homes, which is similar to what I do. It says, all the plaintiffs are real estate professionals who hold valid real estate licenses in the state of Michigan and who, in order to use the MLS, must be members of the National Association of Realtors, the Michigan Association of Realtors, and local organizations such as the Gross Point Board of Realtors. Uh, I don't know the other, I can't do the other ones off the top of my head because it's in a different state. So. Um, 
and then I didn't I didn't highlight, but all the plaintiffs earn their living based on the marketing and sale of real property and the commissions derived therefrom. All plaintiffs are required to pay dues to the defendants, and all plaintiffs are required to be members of the aforementioned in order to access the information in the MLS. Now, then it talks about the defense, which is the National Association of Realtors, but I thought this part was fascinating. We go over it. The defendants own, operate, and maintain the MLS, which is an electronic listing service which publishes all of the real estate listings, the specific characteristics of each property, the commission agreement, property taxes, and all other pertinent information regarding the property. Up until recently, the MLS contained clear and unambiguous information uh, regarding a broker's commission, and that's absolutely true. I always knew what I would be paid on a commission if I, if I helped sell that house, or if I was listing that house, I always knew that, and they've taken that from me. That's me, I mean, that, they've taken that from me. I, that's not an opinion, that's a fact. Um, the, only, the only thing that would be weird in this one is there are, there are MLSs that aren't owned by the realtor board which is odd, I, I get it. But different places, like real estate is different all throughout the United States, and there are places where the MLS is not owned by the real estate agents or the board that, that puts the information in, which is odd. Okay, while the National Association of Realtors up until recently predicated access to the MLS upon being a member of its organization, it changed the policy after a series of cases in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and California, and they found the compulsory membership to be an unfair restraint of trade which is fascinating because I hadn't even heard about this. So there have been cases won according to this lawsuit against the National Association of Realtors by realtors saying, we, um, we, uh, we, want, we want access to the MLS and you're not giving it to us as members, basically. If I, if I butchered that, just read it through it again. It says, Despite this, and this is the part that's interesting, so that was at the national level. So it says, despite this, the National Association of Realtors has transferred this mandatory membership requirement to the state and local boards. So what did NAR do? They just said, well, the state and local boards are now responsible for it. Which if you read this, they, if you read this case, they say, these, these three uh, uh, plaintiffs have said, we don't, we don't wanna be part of the board, we just wanna use the MLS. And each time, <laughs> They said you have to you have to join all of them, and and by the way, it is it is concurrent. So I have to join the St. Louis Association in mine, which means I have to join the Missouri Association, which means I have to join the National Association. You don't just get to choose which board you're a part of. So in this case, on these folks that don't have to be part of NAR, but do have to be part of their local association, you can see how that's a little bit different than what I'm what I'm talking about or what I have. It says, the National Association has transferred this mandatory membership requirement to the state and local boards, which essentially perpetuates their same compulsory membership practices which have been found to be illegal. In fact, the National Association charters of each local, I'm sorry, National Association charters each of the local boards of realtors and sets the rules and guidelines for how each cell operate. Specifically, plaintiffs are required to be members of all three entities in order to utilize the MLS service. So you can see where that's weird, right? Just logically weird. You've, there's been court cases that say that you're not required to be part of the National Association. The National Association then kicks it back to the locals, and then the locals say that you have to be part of the National Association to, to be a part of the MLS. This is what's being alleged. I'm not saying anything, it's in the case. Okay, so here we go, it says, the plaintiffs are real estate brokers and agents, all licensed as realtors in the state of Michigan, engaged in the sale of primary residential sale of property. We've gone over that. Um, the plaintiffs are all compulsory members of the defendant organizations. In early 2024, plaintiffs initially contacted defendants and requested that they be allowed to use the MLS system without being members. Alternatively, plaintiffs requested that they be allowed to drop their membership in these organizations altogether. These requests were echoed and repeated in Ju June and July 2024. Real Comp 2, Mar, and the local boards all responded to the plaintiff's inquiry, uniformly denying this request and reiterating that membership in all three of these entities was mandatory without exception. This membership requirement is mandatory to access the MLS, even though the National Association of Realtors allows access to non-realtors. And that's the part that really, really, really can get under people's skin. I'm not gonna say who, but can you imagine? Somebody that walks in off the street is allowed to have access to materials that real estate agents who are licensed by the state are not allowed to have. Defendants 
Oh, here we go. Defendants mandate membership in their organization, which is akin to a mandating membership in a union or other trade organization, depriving the members of free choice. Additionally, the defendants charge significant membership fees, which plaintiffs have paid in the past and continue to pay today. So that what they're saying there is, are you a trade organization? The National Association of Realtors a trade organization? Are we a union? I'm saying, are we? Uh, is the National Association of Realtors a union? Are they looking out for realtors' best interest? Is that their number one goal? If you read about the National Association of Realtors, they say home ownership, encouraging home ownership. They don't say anything about really being on the realtor's side. So it's very, very, it's, look, this is a very confusing thing. It wouldn't shock me if they throw this thing right out of court. Uh, but it's a asking very interesting questions in a time of serious upheaval in our industry. It says, up until recently, as part of being a member in the defendant's organization, plaintiffs were provided with a guarantee of commission pursuant to the broker fee component of the MLS, which I have no problem with. That's the way it was. It's true. It was true with mine. I don't know. I mean, I can only speak for myself. In November 2023, defendant and the National Association of Realtors agreed to settle several class action lawsuits, the Stitzer Burnett class action, as part of those settlements agreed to do away with the guaranteed broker commission. Pursuant to the settlement, NAR propagated a new MLS rule which pro prohibited offers of compensation being listed on the MLS, which means as you're a seller, you're not allowed to say how much money you're willing to pay the buyer's agent to come and s sell your property. It's a problem. I say how much? Because in my MLS, you're allowed to in, say if the seller is paying a uh, concession. They've made commission a dirty word. This decision made largely, this is, this is the part which was, I thought, fascinating. This decision made largely without any input by the defendant's members greatly diminished any value created by the compulsory membership requirement in their organization as there is now no guarantee of broker commission associated with using the MLS. So what they're saying there in short, Look, you guys negotiated a settlement without, without the def in this case, the defendants having any input. You just unilaterally made these changes, and you put them in the MLS, which we must access to do our business, and it, we didn't agree to that. That's what they're saying. Uh, this truly eliminated the sole purpose of the National Association of and. Uh, Michigan Association of Realtors sponsored MLS systems by eliminating the guarantee of compensation between brokers. So they're saying you took out this part, which there's no point of us being in this anymore. That's what they're saying. Uh, uh, while further, while the, N the National Association and the MLS have argued that the removal of this information is for the benefit of the consumer, plaintiffs believe it is contrary thereto and invites side negotiation, disharmony among agents and brokers, and confusion for the conf consuming public, and even allows for individual and potentially discriminatory pricing per buyer, per buyer, which is a fair housing violation. You can't just say somebody off the street, I'm going to charge you this, I'm going to charge you that, different numbers. I mean, there, there's so many laws that are, that are being intertwined with this settlement and, and, and just such a bad situation. Um, but, you know, inviting side negotiations, do we really want things negotiated off of, off of the contract? Is that really where we wanted to go? I'm, I'm asking. I'm not saying anything because it's, you know, I'm, I'm a member of NAR. Full disclosure, I'm a member of NAR uh, and all my local boards. It says, in addition, the requirement of membership in the defendant organizations constitutes a conspiracy to monopolize the use of the MLS and creates barriers to the market for all realtors, agents, and brokers who seek to enter the market but do not wish to belong to one of the defendant organizations. Further, the settlement of the National Association of Realtors class action lawsuits and the removal of the compensation guarantee for brokers results in a lack of transparency for buyers and sellers in terms of commission compensation and invites deceptive practices which have and will continue to adversely affect plaintiffs. This is contrary to the original intent of the Stitzer Burnett class action lawsuit. So why are we taking away, they're saying, why are we taking away transparency from the buyer and the seller? It used to be they knew exactly what, what they were paying, and now we're going to pretend that they're not actually paying that or that the buyer is going to inflate. And, and I'm saying pretend because that's what this is, this is doing. I, I'm, I'm following what NAR says, okay? Whatever they, they put down, I'm doing because I'm in the business, okay? And this, this is just a lawsuit saying, look, this, this isn't right. Also, as to real estate professionals who are members of the class, 
Now that the National Association of Realtors have unilaterally agreed to change the tenants of the MLS, there's no benefit derived from being a member as to the commission guarantees. This affects both break, both the, both agents and brokers. And then, you know, this is going through the charges, so they, they've, got, they've got these charges. And so it says, defendant's mandatory membership requirement for their organization constitutes a combination of entities which seeks to restrain the plaintiffs from doing business in the state of Michigan. Specifically, these organizations as a group require that all plaintiffs be members in order to access information contained on the MLS. Such a requirement is a restraint of trade as it deprives the plaintiffs of free choice as to whether to be a member and seeks to monopolize the information contained on and accessed in the MLS. It says defendants mandate membership in their organizations in order to essentially hold hostage access to the MLS, only allowing those entities and persons who pay membership fees access to the same. And in order to perpetuate the above scheme and continue to mandate the class members to comply with their membership requirements, defendants use their overwhelming economic power and market dominance to coerce plaintiffs. And that's what I have. So that's, that's, the, that's the suit, okay? So that's, it's a long suit, it's 20 minutes, and look, I don't, you may not watch this whole thing, and that's okay, but I had some questions, and I, and I wanted to go over, I kind of wanted to go over them with you and just, and just kind of talk through it. So it says, one of the questions is, how could this lawsuit impact future relationship between realtors and MLS providers across the United States? Well, we've already got a weird situation right now where some MLSs aren't owned by the realtor boards, which uh, living in St. Louis and working in St. Louis, I have no idea how that, how that works, how that makes any sense. There is an argument that says people are going to end up, sell, everyone's going to end up selling their MLS so that no realtors own it, um, which is odd. It's basically, think about it like this. Like, are we just creating another Zillow, basically, at the end of the day? I mean, all of our information gets fed to Zillow. I mean, is there a situation where people break from the National Association of Realtors and just go straight to Zillow or an alternative listing portal? If you, if you really want to get kind of fun, Homes.com was purchased by CoStar. CoStar is the largest by far commercial real estate uh, information service. And they hold the most listings by far. They are they are a monopoly. Um, there's there's a few other ones that are kind of getting going, but it, but it's always been them. And and those people pay a massive amount of fees to access that data. Is that the model we're going to uh, as agents? Uh, I don't know said, what are the broader implications of challenging compulsory membership in realtor associations in the real, ta real estate industry? Well, should you, the question is, should you be allowed to, say there's four different real estate associations, should you be allowed to be a member of each or allowed to be a member of none? What if one real estate board is actually working for you as the real estate agent and another board is actively working against you? Why would you be compelled to be a member of the board that's not working for your best interests? It doesn't make any sense to me. So could a ruling in favor of the plaintiffs lead to more lawsuits challenging similar practice in other states? Well, if they're, if they're doing class action status, I suspect it will uh, cause a ripple effect throughout the United States. I wouldn't be surprised by that. Um, if the plaintiffs succeed, how might this case reshape the operational structures of real estate firms that rely on MLS access? Well, I do see it as a, a homes.com turning into a, 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 a very significant pay to play uh, organization. The only difference there being instead of the dues going to the real estate National Association of Realtors, they would go to the pockets of uh, CoStar, the owner of homes.com. Um, and then if you've only got one or two uh, organizations that have all the data, uh, they can obviously price themselves wherever they want to be priced. And it could end up actually being worse for the, <laughs> for the National Association of Realtors. Um, could the outcome of this case encourage a shift towards more independent or alternative real estate networks outside of NAR, NAR's influence? Um, if you decouple the National Association of Realtors uh, MLS system from the agents, I think the power of the National Association of Realtors is uh, greatly diminished. Um, could, it, could another group step in and represent real estate agents? Possibly. Possibly. How might this case influence the public perception of the real estate industry, particularly regarding transparency and fair compensation? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Uh, when, the, when I saw the suit and how it's been portrayed in the media, uh, I learned how much people hate real estate agents. Okay. I never, I mean, my friends are always nice to me and, and they never say anything. 
But just online, the amount of hate that you get as a real estate agent is unbelievable. Uh, people cheering for your failure every day in a, in a business where, uh, where within three years, 80% of the agents that started are gone. Uh, it's an absolutely brutal business. And the fact that people are cheering on its demise makes, uh, makes me just understand that people, people have their opinions. You're never going to change. Uh, like, for instance, there are consumer groups that aren't happy with the California Board of so board, uh, New Documents, okay? Uh, those are paid groups, um, paid consumer groups. And those groups are never going to be happy with anything real estate agents do. Uh, they, will, they, they just won't. There's nothing you can do. The DOJ isn't necessarily excited with what the settlement is. They could come in tomorrow, and they, they're still trying to open that case, uh, and come at us again, I say us, as the National Association of Realtors. There's no one that likes real estate agents. I mean, it's, 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 per, it's been shown, so I understand that. So you're not going to change anything. Uh, and nothing will change as far as the perception of real estate agents in this current situation. What could the potential ripple effects on homeowners, home buyers and sellers if changes to the MLS access and realtor membership requirements are mandated? Um, you know, I look at this as like license law and I'm, and I used to be like, everybody should be licensed. Okay. And now as, as I get older, I'll tell you the license laws are used to restrict people in my opinion from, um, from, from practicing, um, good service. Uh, what I mean by that, for instance, uh, if you're a barber, okay, as long as you know, like the hygiene rules and whatnot, you should be able to go be a barber. You don't, you, should, you know, and you say, I just, I've gotten to that point. Now, you, you may not get there yet, and that's totally okay, but, but I am a licensed realtor, okay, by my state. That doesn't mean that all real estate agents are the wonderful, great people, like, they can always do things perfectly. They, there's, they are humans, and they are not perfect. I will, I will say this. If you think that a licensed uh, real estate agent is always perfect, um, first of all, you'll be depressed. But, but, but look at where you can be a licensed a physician. Do you think all physicians are great and perfect? I mean, I'm pretty sure it runs the 80-20, the Pareto Principle Rule. I, I believe there's probably 20 great ones and 20% great, 80% garbage in everything. It's just the way it is. It says, how do compulsory memberships in professional organizations balance the interest of standardization and competition? And is this balance being challenged effectively in this lawsuit? Well, I don't really like this compulsory membership in uh, professional organizations. Uh, you should want to join a, a professional association. Um, I made the argument on Twitter today. I said, look, if... Uh, the, net, the, the, DOJ came, the DOJ and the Stitzer burnout lawsuit came at real estate agents for making too much money, okay? Which I've never heard that. They never do that with doctors. They never do that with auto, auto repair technicians. They never do that with any other organization. But they managed to come at the National Association. And, 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 and the question I had is simply, look, would they sue? Would the DOJ come out and sue the National Association of Home Buyers or Home Builders if house prices got too expensive, no, it would be ludicrous. What about if the spreads between uh, the mortgages got too out of whack? Would the DOJ sue the uh, Mortgage Bankers Association? Why is it that it was okay to sue the National Association of Realtors, but not those other organizations? If the same thing happens, quote unquote, they make too much money. It's a very, very odd thing. It means basically that the National Association is not being treated, National Association of Realtors is not being treated the same way other trade associations are being treated. And it looks like the National Association of Realtors is not even a trade association for realtors based on what they say they're for, which is home, home ownership and fostering home ownership throughout the United States. So it's a very fascinating thing. What if you, and, I, and so my question to you is, is if you get rid of the National Association of Realtors tomorrow, what changes? What changes? Does the MLS go away? I mean, look at all the, the things you, look at Zillow. I mean, just look at it. Look at homes.com. Look at realtor.com. I mean, you've got, you've got all these organizations and it's like, I don't know, it just seems like things are going to change no matter what I do, basically. 
So I just wanted to bring the suit to you. Look, I, I, it's, it's not easy and it's not going to be solved tomorrow. Okay. They could throw this case out. There could be new cases joined later. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? And, and honestly, who knows what's going to happen with these new agreements in the, in the space. But I, I did want to bring it to you because I did find it fascinating. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you on the next one.